My name is Andrea. Uh, this is Jason and Louise. Our app is Mozart's Ear. The goal of our app is to be a music transcriber. So in short, what that means is we want to do what speech-to-text software does. We want to do music-to-notation. And we want to be able to notate, or we are able to notate melodies, so without simultaneous notes, just one note at a time. And then after the melody is notated, we, the app can then uh, identify sort of uh, key melodic features, like repetition, or motivic, uh, motives, or uh, scale of motion. And the motivation for this, so why I do this, is because it's actually really hard to do. Um, it's time intensive, um, and it's also really difficult to learn to do, to be able to do. Um, but it's also very useful. It's useful for composers, for instance, who might want to play on their instrument before writing something down. Um, and then it's also useful for uh, maybe classical musicians who are very used to reading, uh, reading music, um, but are trying to learn music from maybe non-Western musicians who are not used to uh, writing down their music. So the, um, the design is, is composed in uh, different places. First, the uh, user will tap the tempo he would like to use. The tempo is acquired in bits per minute. And it's classified. And the user can also uh, set, provide a frequency range that he would like to play. Uh, then is the listening phase, where a metronome is displayed while the user is playing the uh, instrument. Uh, the music signal is acquired, and the uh, fundamental frequencies are detected. Then is the analysis phase, where a preliminary note identification list is uh, generated, uh, which uh, may contain enharmonic equivalents. Uh, then a key identification algorithm is performed based on key profile and accidental detection for, uh, towards a final note detection. Then uh, the user can uh, select to, to generate a pattern recognition. So uh, uh, this algorithm is, is done to uh, to get the repetitions, scalar motions, and triads. And the user can save this notation into a library where it can view and delete previous notations. And everything is shown on a music staff graph. Uh, so now uh, we'll have a demo. So, uh, So this is actually the welcome screen of our application. Uh, yeah, Andrea will uh, start. Uh, and here's where the user can tap the, uh, the tempo people like to use. And the, there's the classification. So it's 93 uh, bits per minute. And it's called moderato. Um, and also, the user, if, if the user knows, it can select a, a frequency uh, range that will provide a, a more accurate notation. That's if only the user knows this. Uh, we added this because of trying to eliminate uh, to have more accurate uh, notation algorithm. Um, so I guess you can start. Um, 
And so we'll see here, it has recognized a triad. Uh, the triad is, you know, it just is, a, is the way these notes are arranged. I can show you in the library, um, we pre-recorded this uh, by adding in the, the, the notes uh, manually without actually using a microphone. So here, if I analyzed it, and recognizes that this is a motive that happens in the first instance, and it gets repeated here. So, da di da ba da, da di da ba da, and then here it recognizes the triad again. The reason you might want to know about these uh, features is if you're trying to understand how the music is constructed, or if you're a composer, or if you're trying to memorize the melody, it just helps orient you and give you something to talk about if you want to talk about these other people as well. Um, so going back to the library, um, as I briefly showed you, you can view files that you saved previously. Um, you can delete them, etc. So, yeah. Okay, so we're just going to bring this back to. All right. So it wasn't all fun and games. <laughs> we had issues. Um, but mainly, one of the things we really want to look at is it's just just focus on one specific instrument. To cover the entire spectrum, 0 to 4K, is very error prone. The algorithms as well for pitch, uh, for rhythm, you want to customize that to that specific instrument. Some have more overtones than others, different uh, strengths and different frequencies. We want to leverage, you want to ideally leverage all of those properties to get the best detection for one instrument. Um, next is music key detection. We discovered that it is really an approximation. If the musician plays every note possible, you're never going to detect what key that. So, in order to get the best result, we did discover a little bit too late an MRI toolbox, that's for music information retrieval, that's for MATLAB. We didn't have time to go through that, but it does have some interesting properties and algorithms that we could have compared to to improve our own. Lastly, um, in order to reduce the amount of strict notation requirements for writing music scores, what we could have done was obviously abstract music score. For example, replacing the notes with actual bars, and that's just one example of many to try and reduce all these requirements that we have to follow. <coughs> As for future work, uh, currently our work only does one note at a time. It would be nice to have multiple score for harmonies, the piano, I'd say that's a dream, but it's something to aim for. Of course, uh, the music score can be edited, and that would be a nice feature to have. We also, because we do record music, you would naturally want to be able to play that back. And since you have a music score, why not make it auto score? And lastly, of course, exporting this music score to notation software for desktop, laptop would be great. A widely supported format would be music XML. Any questions? <laughs> Were you actually detecting that the same set of notes were appearing twice? Is that what happened? Yeah, so we detected, so if it was just like exactly the same notes, that would have been marked as a repetition, but they weren't exactly the same notes that appeared, right? So it recognized that they're similar enough that they're emotive, but our ear recognizes that they're similar. So how good is its ability to recognize similar? I mean, there are parameters within, within which it operates, yeah. It's pretty good. Um, generally, uh, right now, because the uh, rhythm detection is kind of lacking. We're more focused on pitch. So for motives, uh, we do kind of have a restraint that like half of the notes in that motive section at least have to be, the translation have to be exactly uh, the same. The first differences have to be equal. Right. But the other half is allowed to vary and we do that by a pattern recognition where you give like a score to a sequence and the higher the score, the better it matches. Um, so did you, how many different motives do you have the system trained on right now? It doesn't train, it just detects it automatically. Oh, it just detects it automatically. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So it's actually yeah. not um, Is the metronome silenced because it'll interfere with the actual recognition? Or is it possible to have it click like a real metronome? Well, originally we were planning to do that, and uh, we had a button to mute and unmute. But yeah, it's... Uh, was going to interfere with the, the music, so we removed that option. <laughs> okay. Very, very good. Yeah.